Hey, what's up, and welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 15. Today we're talking about The Company of Wolves from 1984, directed by Neil Jordan. And we want to know if this movie gets werewolf lore right. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to The Dumpster. We're dipping our uh, toes, our uh, uh, paws. Four, four paws, yeah, I would say, yeah. Back in the old vamp. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Werewolves, not vampire showing you asshole. <laughs> We're dipping our fucking foreskin into uh, <laughs> oh, the werewolf no. uh, swimming pool. I don't know, so, again, so on you, the show. So if you peel back the foreskin, is there a wolf inside? That's what I want to know. Is there hair on? The skin. Are you hairy inside your penis? Uh, we have to ask uh, uh, Mel Brooks from uh, 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 Men in Tights. He would know. I put your little thing in here and I nip the tip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. You Just line them. up. Yeah, the little lipstick for you there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, the company of wolves, Sean. There's a reason why we're doing this in dolls in the same month. Uh, indulge me. Uh, well, because these not only. Not only do these movies complement each other, in my opinion, very much so. Um, they're both these weird kind of fever dream fantasy films. Uh, yeah, I, okay. But it's also the time of year that I watch both of these. Hmm. November was the perfect month. We usually we do like a little holiday thing for the month, but uh, we decided. I just decided let's wipe the slate, and we're gonna do some. We're we're gonna get our our our, our stuffings, if you will, from something else. <laughs> uh, by the yeah, way, yeah, right. The cranberry, the sauce. cranberry sauce. It actually is cranberry sauce this time, maybe. Uh, we'll see. But uh, this the these two really uh, are. are Part of my viewing for the for this time of year, right? Doll, dolls and Company of Wolves. Yeah, mean. Dolls and the Company of Wolves. It, 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 they're just great colder weather. Like we're we're easing okay. into the winter. Like autumn's kind of in full gear. Autumn at this point. autumn is in full effect, and um, they're just two cozy movies um, that just for whatever reason feel right this time of year to you. Oh, all the time, mm. every year. It the, the, and also as we as we kind of careen into the winter months, um, the hand right. and magic are up there too. We got to cover magic uh -huh. next year. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, before we get into the skinwalkers and eyebrows that meet in the middle, <laughs> um, if you want more movie dumpster content, you can head over to patreoncom slash dumpster. You can get an ad free audio version of the show for just as little as two dollars a month. You can support us, and uh, we'd really appreciate that. And for no money at all, you can like the video here on YouTube and share it with your friends. Or if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please leave us that five stars and maybe a review. It you know, really does help get the show out to more people. And uh, we're always trying to grow this community, get more people in here. Uh, we all love these movies, so let's uh, get together and talk about them and uh, enjoy them. Yeah, if you want to know what the Dumpster Boys are up to, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on all your favorite social media platforms. And you can also head over to MovieDumpsterPodcast.com. We got a store kicking up there. We got it's it's winter, baby. We got those those uh knit caps, those yep. movie dumpster knit caps. Oh yeah, you got the green, you got the pink, you got the gold. They're nice. And we also have an events page. So if you're looking to see where we're gonna be at, you can check that out and uh and yeah. So Company of Wolves, now this is another one I feel like I've been hearing about for a while, and you know, it's kind of funny, I, I feel like we mentioned this on the Dolls episode, but this is another film that has an iconic cover, poster, however you want to word that, with this friggin' wolf coming out of this dude's face. Uh, and also, we didn't even mention this yet, I know we literally just started the episode, but this is also kind of a secret Red Riding Hood film. I don't think there's anything secret it about it. It was to me, because I, I had never saw the cover, of, well, I saw the, the thing coming out, but yeah. I must have missed Little Red Hood in the corner there. Oh yeah, there. this cover, now I talked about how iconic The Dolls was, and you yes. had just mentioned that, and how that stood out to me in the movie uh, in the uh, video store, um, and so did this one. Okay. This is my favorite, one of my favorites. Werewolf if not, movie? No, this is my favorite, if not my favorite, poster art. Oh, oh, oh. You cannot beat this man. There is a fucking werewolf coming out of this man's mouth. <laughs> yep. It's just so iconic, dude, with the with the giant moon and the company wolves in that blood red font. It's awesome. And yeah, little red, you got that yeah, little red riding hood. I forgot about right her there. focusing so much on whatever's uh, yeah, yeah. going on there on the side there. <laughs> So I, I I just I love this artwork so much. That was an, this was another one that like I always saw in the video store, but mm. I never rented like when I was a little kid. Got you. Freaked but I always out. remember walking past it and be like, "That's freaky." 
What yeah. the hell is that movie about? You know? No, totally. Yeah, I'm sold just on the artwork alone, yeah, no, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, that was the thing back <laughs> in the day. That's how they got you to fucking pick it up and check it out. Because yeah. otherwise, no one was. <laughs> now, this is another high fantasy film. I, I always say more than dolls, more leaning in the fairy tale fairy tale uh, department, though. Yes, it's a art film, fantasy film, directed by the great Neil Jordan. Right, um, Vamp- interview with a vampire, and a ton of other films. Byzantium, High Spirits, uh, The Crying Game, In Dreams. He's done a lot of bangers, and this is one of his earliest uh, works, which is which is really cool. And you can kind of get the flavor of his filmmaking mm. and writing and directing in this. Now. This film in particular, I don't remember, I can't I can't pinpoint this one where I had such a vivid mm. memory of seeing it for the first time. Um, it might be all the bong resin in my brain. <laughs> like at the time. At the time, yeah. Okay. Cl- clouding, it's clouded there. Yeah, sure. Um, Evil bong took over yeah. <laughs> and said, yeah. get the hell out of here, company <laughs> of wolves, we'll come back to you later. But I remember watching it at the time um, and just being really into like legend and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And, and I could see that. Okay. Yeah. Kind of, it was kind of in the mix there. Like yeah, yeah. Coming up as a, as a early te- in a, or my early teens and watching that kind of in tandem. Sure. Um, and again, I just really love, this is another one of my favorite movies okay. and doing this back to back with dolls was just like a no brainer uh, sure. for me this month for all those reasons I listed before but also it's just one of my favorites I think this is one of the best werewolf movies of all time. okay so I did kind of pull the words out of your mouth yes there. I just wasn't there I wasn't there yet. my bad my bad um I in my opinion sure um I think I, this is the one of the best n- now uh are you saying just in your opinion one of your favorite movies period or horror or like you just love this movie that much I think I love this movie that much just for what it does visually mm. uh, what it does from a filmmaking standpoint okay. and from a werewolf lore and how it's depicted mm. standpoint okay yeah yeah. it's very classic in its approach yeah and it approaches it with like this fe- fever dream type uh, storytelling which is really interesting to me yeah I mean they make that pretty clear up front like in the first 10 yeah. you're like okay I kind of see what we're getting into for sure i don't have a ton of, to talk about behind the scenes of this because it's just again much like dolls it, the movie kind of speaks for itself okay. and it's bizarreness yeah um this is like terry gillian fucking wrote this kind of yeah kind of a little bit it has that it definitely has a it's high surrealism for oh, sure yeah yeah i mean i guess not too i mean yes but no not i, I wouldn't go terry gilliam. i mean i'm kind of taking the piss out of it a little by saying that <laughs> i wouldn't but... go full terry gilliam but yeah at mo, especially that fucking uh, uh, wedding scene in particular. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, we're, that, we're that's what makes me it. jump to Terry. But yeah. Um. So yeah, like we said, directed by Neil Jordan, uh, incredible. Uh, it's got music by George Fenton, and I wanted to mention the music mm. again because, like, the main overture of this movie is like this violin music yeah. that I really like, and it complements um, the all of the visuals really well and it also has this weird like whistling like like when we're like it like this kind of segue into dream sequences right, back yeah. and forth which i think is really great um yeah i like the music in this it, it fits the uh theme especially a lot of this movie yeah. is kind of in an undescript kind of uh old england or old europe uh fantasy europe kind of thing yeah and it, and it fits yeah yeah and then i guess the only other really thing i, I want to talk about is the effects for this movie oh and uh God. done that's like the crown jewel of this film to me uh yeah they're done by christopher tucker and um i remember i don't know if it's included on the on the blu-ray release i got this is the 4k ultra hd blu-ray mm. from uh Shao factory by the way it looks fucking gorgeous I, it looks I, Incredible. Yeah, I was gonna say another incredible transfer. I feel like we yeah. say that a lot on yeah. the show. Very rarely do we not compliment yeah. the transfers, but wow, this is like unbelievable. It's even better because I bought there was a region two or I, it was either region two or the UK Blu ray, sure. and it was only available in the UK on Blu ray. Um, but I have the region free, so I was able to watch a Blu ray version of this before this one came out. Got you, got you. But this is the official region one release. Is this a recent release? Did this just come out? Or? This one came out. I think it came out last year. I wanted to do it last year, but we didn't get to it last okay, year. Okay, got yeah. Around the same time. I mean, if so, it's 4K Ultra, I'm assuming it's fairly recent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I can't remember if it was early. Man. The, Sorry, the, the years just blend together, dude. Did, like, didn't mean to go off on that. No, but no, I was no. Just curious. No, they yeah. just blend together because I was. I'm not. I can't remember if it was the beginning of the year yeah, of this yeah. year or last year that we wanted to do True, this. True, because it's kind of coming to the tail end now, right? Yeah, it's kind of, we're coming into the to the end game. Uh, regardless, though, 
it's also on YouTube if you're curious. I mean, I have your joke. Just just check out the the disc if you can. But if you're curious, it's on YouTube, and I don't know if it's that cut, but the YouTube transfer is also really really good. It says this one's got new interviews with the the makeup effects artists, um, and I'm not entirely sure if it because I didn't watch the special features yet. Mm. Um, but I did. I I think on the other Blu-ray there is an interview with Christopher Tucker, mm-hmm. not Chris Tucker. I know. I from saw Money that Talks and, and laughed a little yeah. when I saw that. I was like, God, oh, this poor bastard's got to be named the same as another very famous actor. I said Money Talks, but like The Fifth Element is the one everybody's oh, like, wow, or that Friday went right over my head. I wasn't even thinking. Anyway, um, it was a really great. There was I don't I can't remember exactly where I watched it. I think it was on the previous Blu-ray release. It might be on this. I'm not sure. sure. Anyway interview with uh, Chris Tucker and um, he goes into how he made all the werewolf effects and the transformation stuff which I gotta be honest this is real I mean this is like one of the best transformations in 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 werewolf movies in my opinion um, I, I really love it and it, it's so when we get to it well I'll talk hmm. a little bit more about it but um, it, it's interesting the process of how they went about it so that's about it okay um I don't really know too much about the behind the scenes. Is, of this. is it just you just don't know? Is it hard to find? I don't think it's hard to find. I just, to be perfectly transparent, I didn't. I I didn't really have too much time to go deep dive yeah, into no. this. Just curious. Um, and I think talking about the movie just as it is is interesting enough. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of weird shit in this. Uh, yeah, this is a weird one. Yeah. And what's even funnier about that is like just just to that point is like you know when we were kids. We didn't know shit about them. You know, well, yeah, you just yeah. watch the movie oh, yeah. and then you took whatever your takeaway was. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It wasn't like we didn't, you know, there was no, I mean, as we got older, there were, but there was no DVDs or Blu-rays with special features. That's why, oh, that's yeah. why, well, that's... that's why I was so enamored by uh, DVDs because they had all the special features on them. And that's why you bought them to uh, see all yeah, the behind the scenes I stuff. always think about that Lord of the Rings extended, like some of the best behind the scenes ever because they literally show you how they made every fucking part of the film. Yeah. So I'm showing my hand a little bit in terms of uh, research on this. Um, so shoot me. Sorry. Yeah, the huntsman's gonna come in and yeah. take you out, Joe. I'm gonna get. I'm He's gonna, gonna g- fucking unibrow. You better run. <laughs> He's gonna take my head off with the axe, and then my head's gonna go into a barrel yeah. of milk. Also, just on the off chance someone is offended by that, it's a plot line in this friggin' movie. We're not just saying that. Oh, if you have unibrows, yeah, I don't know. You're a fucking werewolf. <laughs> Appa- I see you. Apparently, according <laughs> to this movie, <laughs> according to Andrew Lansbury. And if you and if you're running around in the woods naked, we better flee like like nobody's fucking business. <laughs> So yeah, not a huge front load mm. on this one, right? So we, so uh, do you want to plot? You you can you want to try to plot uh, crunch this mother? Yeah. Uh, what can I even say? So I want to see how, how you kind of interpret this film. So we kind of have this whole thing with this girl Rosaline. She's I uh, I guess as for lack of a better term in modern times, at least as far as 1984. Uh, is concerned. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 1984. But she falls asleep in her bed with a kind of fairy tale book next to her, and we're kind of teleported into her dream, or at least that's kind of how it's presented uh, in this kind of fantasy uh, land, if you will, and like I said, kind of an old Eastern Europe. And uh, it kind of kicks off with her sister being mauled by a bunch of wolves, <laughs> and then we kind of start going into different uh, lore slash uh, folklore, I guess I should say, of different uh, stories about werewolves and wolves and people turning into wolves and wolves turning into people and uh, how kind of they, they assimilate into a society for better or worse and how they kind of then transform back into wolves. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that. And uh, I could go into more detail, but I feel like this is one of those ones where if I do uh, in the plot crunch, it's going to be a disservice because they're kind of like uh, this film almost functions like a mini anthology or or not a mini. It's kind of like an anthology because sort of. of the way it's broken up. But there is also like I would argue two different wraparounds in this film. And I'm, I'm kind of starting to get away from the plot crunch. But there's the main wraparound with the girl in the dream. But there's also a wraparound with Rosaline and her grandma telling these stories mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of interesting how they do this, and it kind of cultivates at the end in a way you might not expect. No. <laughs> it's it's a shocker, I'd say. I, I, I was jumping out of my seat. <laughs> so uh, we kick this film off. We're in, we, we see uh, David Warner. Is oh, right, here. yeah. Dad. Oh, my God. And I wanted to talk about David Warner a little bit because uh, he had passed away yes. last year. And I think that's what it was. I wanted to do this. 
um, anyway, yeah. but he had passed away. So I wanted to kind of use this to talk a little bit about David Warner and how he was one of my favorite actors. And it's, it's such a damn shame. And I wanted to tell a little bit of story, a little story because I got to meet, I actually got to meet oh, wow. David Warner. Um, and I had him sign my Company of Wolf, Wolves poster. Uh, he reattached his head he after did. the latter incident. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Um, it was kind of, it was a little sad, but also sweet. Mm. So I believe it was Chiller Theater. I met him, and nobody was at his table. Like nobody. That's like Malcolm McDowell. I'm like, like, does nobody know who this fucking guy I, I, is? I'm like, it's fucking David Warner, dude, from the island, from Ninja Turtles two, from the Company of Wolves, from Cast a Deadly Spell, from so many wonderful yeah. movies, you know. And um, he's such a great actor. And uh, so I, it was great though because it, because there was nobody there, I got to talk to him for a little while. Uh, okay. And um, we were just talking about all different kinds of stuff in the films he's been in. And he was just a real, he was just a real sweet guy. He was so excited that I, I had brought him the Company of Wolves poster. And he's signing it. We're talking. And I don't remember verbatim what he said, but he he referred to Angela Lansbury as a see you next Tuesday. <laughs> and I thought that was the funniest fucking thing. I never forgot that. Uh, she kind of plays a see you next Tuesday in this film. I mean, she's a nice old lady, but some of the shit she says, like, this, I'm like, Grandma, do you have an ulterior motive like, here? Like, if I remember correctly, he was like, oh, this was such a great movie, and Neil was so great to work with, and the concept of the movie, and all the things that were in it, and how he played, like... Uh, a guy in the in the 1700s, mm -hmm. and then a, and then a modern times guy, yeah. and all this stuff. And then he's like, "And that Angela Lansbury, see you next Tuesday." <laughs> I was like, "Wow, <laughs> wow, yeah, that is kind of a shocker." I was like, "Whoa!" Because even watching the movie uh, when she shows up, like I just kind of said, you you almost maybe I just don't know enough about Angela Lansbury, but you kind of always saw her in those motherly roles, or if you ever saw Murder She Wrote, Murder, she wrote or uh, yeah. with that Disney movie, the bedrooms and bed posters. Oh, uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, she's always plays that kind of character. But as we know, in the history of Hollywood, Jeffrey Jones is a, well, that's maybe a horrible comparison. <laughs> but my point was, you don't really know what people are doing. I'm yeah. sorry, Angela. I didn't mean to go take it there. It was kind of just, you, he's you, the guy I always jumped to for some reason. You take that bat about, back about Mrs. Teapot. I think you got what I was trying to say yeah. with that horrible example. But uh, before we get to Grandma, we, uh, like I said, we kind of have a uh, the sister runs in, actually. Yeah. Alice. Yeah, and for a long time I thought this was Olivia Hussey, but it's not. Hmm. I could see that. Uh, yeah, you can see a little bit, right? Yeah. Um. So... So yeah, so mom and dad get home. David Warner and and mom and the, and the daughter, right. and uh, they want her to go get her sister Rosaline, who's upstairs now. Again, we have this giant mansion in the English countryside. They need to get a fucking maid because oh, this place is disgusting looking. It, well, I love it. The walls are fucking brown. Have you ever heard of a sponge, <laughs> folks? <laughs> I love it. It's yellowed with age. It's got oh, charm. Yeah. It's got character. Um. It's huge. There, she's like running up ten flights of fucking oh stairs God. to get to the to the attic, and that's where Rosaline's room is. And it's just it again. Cozy is the is the absolute yeah. best word I can I can use, and I'm gonna keep using it again. <laughs> I, I did read though that the budget was very limited in this film. So uh, even though I am joking, clean the place up. Maybe they literally could not afford it because I think even Neil Jordan was saying they had to make like ten trees look like a forest, and they fucking did it. So. Yeah. Oh my God. There's, There's some serious movie. Magic it's going very on. convincing. Yeah, the sets in this are very convincing. So Rosaline's upstairs, and they uh, allude to that she might be, she's like sick or something, or she's feigning being yeah. sick. There's inklings that she's mourning somebody, but we don't really know. Right, she never wants to leave her room, and there's like a picture of somebody by her bed. Yeah. Everything is very visual storytelling. Yes. It's not all spelled out for you, and it's that way on purpose. Maybe it's her grandma. I don't know. It could be just to read a little into what happens in this film. I don't know. We pan around the room, and it's got a very labyrinth-esque type deal here yeah. where like you know you see the grandmother doll and you see this weird little like Pillsbury Doughboy guy <laughs> and you see like a uh, like a wolf or something mm. and like all just like in uh, Sarah's room in um Labyrinth, there's like little toys of uh, the fire gang and and Hoggle and Sir Didymus and all that kind oh, of stuff. Right, so yeah, it's kind of yeah. like similar in that where is it a dream? Was it a dream? Not really, because they're all partying at the end of that movie. Yeah, but also like 
we kind of like zoom into this window and this this mountain shot and you kind of get those fantasy vibes almost instantly, but then we're transported to this forest. Oh man. And I, I wasn't initially, I know I said a minute ago that you kind of know within 10 that it's a dream, but those first like five was a little shaky for me. I was like a little confused. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm kind of digging it, but I don't know what the fuck is happening. It's pretty straightforward kind of though, because like, I might've been overthinking there's it. Like, there's like a, it's an art film. Yeah, so like wow. there's, there's a YA novel like next to her and it's like the shattered yeah. dream or whatever. So like that, that all, that's all visual that's touring visual set story up. To, yeah. Yeah. We go out this window, like you said, but like, it's so great because they, the, it's like all matte paintings and miniatures right. and it just looks so fun. It like totally sets that surreal tone to the, to the film. Um, and yeah, like you said before, uh, it's her sister who was like bothering her before. Uh, yeah. And she's running through these woods and like, there's like cobwebs and there's like, it's the house, but it's the woods. And this mm. is the transition from the house to the, to the dream world, to the, to the old forest right. because there's like a grandfather clock, these giant oh, yeah. mushrooms, the toys are there, but they're like gigantic. Yeah. That was creepy. And like you said on the dolls episode, you, we get Teddy is there. Oh. He's in the, he's in the forest. <laughs> yeah, he's wandering around. Yeah. He's like looking like, Hey, what are you doing? It's like one of those room bears, Melbourne bring. Get away from that thing. <laughs> I love that Pillsbury Doughboy looking sailor it's mother. It's like a Robert oh. the Doll kind yeah, of thing. Yes, yes, it's get Robert. Get a fuck away from that. It's, get, get, it's, get it's fucking Robert rain. the Doll, dude. But I love it because it's like it like runs around. It's all weird looking and like falls in front of the sister. It's kind of creepy because I was like trying to grab her. Yeah, it's weird. And then like she starts running. And then we start to see these wolves. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if this is necessarily a criticism, but it is worth at least noting. There are real wolves, but- they, Some of these are just dogs. Some are just dogs. With and it wigs is on. kind of obvious, which does take you out of it a little, but I tried not to think too hard on it. I think it's fine. It's fine for the most part. There's a couple times where I, there's this like German Shepherd or the Sheepdog or something. Well, the German Shepherd's also like real, like one of, okay. is their dog. Because I just want to mention that quickly, is their actual dog is this German Shepherd that kind of shows up throughout the film in her dream, mm -hmm. in the reality. Uh, but because the wolves are also kind of those, I was confused a few times because of that. Anyway. Yeah. They're chasing the sister now. They're hungry. Uh, it, it's just like, so she's having a dream and fantasizing about and that's the death. Exactly about my sister getting killed by wolves. By wolves and loving every second of it. Smiling. Yeah. Came she, a little yeah, in her pants. Oh my god. Uh -uh. Um She's supposed to be 16, but they do not treat this girl like 16. Well, actually, I don't know how old do you think she's supposed to be in this. I think that's about it's like a coming of age yeah. movie as well. That's that's what's kind of wonderful about this because it's by not, the end, sure. It's not just a maybe I shouldn't have made that joke, but I already made it. Yeah. Well. It is what it is. Yeah. Dobby will clean it up, don't worry. <laughs> That's his penance. He hasn't been mentioned oh, in a while. In that, dude, he's in that mansion somewhere. They tried to get du Howard the Duck to do it, you know, just because I mentioned Jeffrey Jones earlier, yeah. oh, but God. he doesn't clean that spunk anymore. No, no, he no. He makes no. Dobby he do it. He doesn't fuck with that, no. He smokes his cigars. He tells Dobby to get the hell in there. He hands him the dish rag, and he's like, oh, master, master. Somehow Howard the Duck has become Dobby's master. The, the wizards gave him out on loan. Well, yeah, he's going to quack fool yeah. him if he doesn't, if he doesn't get back that, to work. Go clean up that little girl's spunk mess. <laughs> Space. Dobby. Rabies. But anyway, yeah, so this this girl gets fucking murdered by wolves. Yeah, now we go full in full on into the dream. So right. that was kind of like the transition from the real world and into that into this dream world where now it's like I think it's like the 1700s, right? Like late or no no no, it's got to be so they had I couldn't quite place They had it. guns, so I'm assuming it's like late 1700s. Maybe, but there is also again that surrealist element to it where it, it is does, a, it's kind of timeless. Yeah, it's as timeless. Well. It's a dream. Yeah. Again, some sequences, like maybe I'm just bad at history, even though I don't think I'm horrible, but the timeline's kind of uh, of the past world. I think or, there or are, in my brain. I think there are liberties taken because you got to understand that this is Rosaline's version right. of ye old England. Exactly. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. So it's like very storybook esque without being definitively any particular year. Right, right. And then uh, to your point, though, Joe, we go to this funeral for her sister. We're interested to Grand and kind of the rest of the village. Angela see Lansbury. Brian Glover's there. Yes. He's, the, he's the neighbor. Uh, and then we also have, you know, mom and dad, you know, but now they're in this old timey situation. We also have the uh, amorous boy. Oh, the amorous boy. Oh, yeah. Fucking baby Woody Harrelson's there. <laughs> That's what he looks like, dude. With his teeth knocked out. Yeah. 
Rosalie. Ah, uh, this poor bastard. That's not a poor bastard. Fuck this guy. He turns out to be a major scumbag. <laughs> right headed bastard. At first, I'm like, all right, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm trying to go on a walk with Rosalie, whatever. But he turns out, he shows his whole ass by the end of this. Oh yeah, dude, he's making ye old pop up funny somewhere. <laughs> About a werewolf. Yeah, yeah. Where the wolf fell down the well in the middle of the store, in the middle of the uh, town there, and he became a wolf man. I think it's kind of interesting, though, in this uh, moment of mourning, you know, mom and dad, they, they could barely handle, especially mom, you know, burying their firstborn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Rosaline's like, well, I'm going to go to Grand's. Yeah. Because <laughs> She's going to make me cookies. Yeah. So so mom and dad are mourning. Yeah. And um, she goes to Angela Lansbury's house. Again, these sets are just so fucking oh, weird the sets and are surreal. So good. And like, like, like you said, like, yeah, I guess they didn't have a lot of money, but like they look so good. Can't not tell. not as good as as legend, but they look, I mean, they look really, really good. Right. Right. Um. And and again, be, between the miniatures and the way that they shoot everything in the matte paintings of it, like it just has this weird surrealistic fairy tale look. It nails it, and you can't help but like home in your head just because. Over and through the woods, grandma's oh house. We guy fucked that up, but you know what I mean. Like in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. Over the river and through the woods. Yeah, there you go. Some shit. Uh, I also they never really go there with this, but I kind of was. Assuming grandma was some kind of green witch or something, but kind of. she's just kind of a herbalist out there, kind of doing her own thing, hanging out with the animals. Yeah, got we, a pet weasel. I mean, uh, it's like a mink I mean, stole you know, that comes to life. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but yeah, so grandma's telling uh, Rosalie about men with eyebrows that meet in the middle and that how men are terrible and wolves. The wolves kill her sister, and that right. kind of kickstarts. The wolf the we- shit. The wolf shit. And yeah. then Grand's like, every guy who's handsome and has eyebrows on me in the middle are, are werewolves. Well, she tells this fucking, this is the first they're like, beasts. story. They're beasts. all, they're beasts. So it's also this demonizing of men yes. and like how they're just sexual deviants. Pretty Literally. Much, pretty much. Uh, but she tells this kind of first story, which I thought at the end it was going to be revealed it was her, but that's not kind of where they end up going with yeah. it, which I'm fine with. But I, that's where my brain was going. And it's the story of this woman who marries a man with a unibrow. Oh, she's, oh by the way, Grant's making a red shawl. Oh, I I couldn't find it, but I was trying to find a fucking red blanket before I came over here to wear. I would have been sweating my ass off, but I could not find one. <laughs> So yeah, like like you said, you yeah. know, we get the we get the werewolf legend dump, and then she tells the story about the 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 first story about the uh, the the woman who married a traveling yes. man. Have you ever seen Jim Henson's Storyteller? No, I really want to. I really want to cover those because those okay. are really excellent. Is that like a series? I'm assuming it's a series with John Hurt as the narrator. <laughs> Of course, and Dr. Buchanan and himself. And it's great. I, we've talked about it before. Okay, and okay. we've talked about it in the same breath as Sherry, Shelley Duvall's fairy tale. Okay, theater, I'm probably which, just forgetting. Yeah, that. yeah. Hi, I'm Shelley Duvall. Yeah. There so, you go. Um, so this one's great too because Angela Lansbury telling the story about this woman who meets this traveling man, and she's like, "Don't ever trust a traveling man. Like, if you don't know where who he is or where he's from, and you can't like corroborate with hit, hit the people that he knows, he's probably a scumbag." Uh, right. If, yeah. If nobody knows him, don't get with him kind and of thing. And he's super handsome under the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. And he has like eyebrows that meet in the middle. Yeah. So they end up getting married. The first night of their marriage, they're going to fuck, right? <laughs> and he ends up getting bare ass naked and he goes over to the door. Stephen Ray, by the way. Uh, should I know that name? Yeah, Stephen Ray. He was in a bunch of stuff. Um, he was. I'm pretty sure he's in The Crying Game. Oh, okay. Too, yeah. So, um, he's great. He's good. Yeah. Um, so he's like going out to like use the bat. He's like, that's what he says. He's like the call of nature, the call of nature, or whatever. And like, it's a full ass moon. He's bare ass naked by this door, and he like looks back, and his eyes are all yellow. Wow. I, it's really cool, man. Yeah. Like, it's creepy. She's creeped out, but she doesn't really think much of it because she's like, like, I'm about to get fucked. Yeah. Yes. Well, she's like, all Train right. Train that snake and come back. <laughs> and she's like, all right, he's going to go take a piss and, and we're going to get on with it. He leaves and never comes I, back. Yeah, Grant's like, she waited and waited but he and never, waited some more. But he never showed up again. So like any normal person, you know, you know, like stabbed in the back by your lover, you just move on. She finds another man. Well, well, she hears wolves that night. Oh yeah, and they right. goes out and they she like gathers up the townsfolk to look for the this for her husband. Mm. And there's like wolf prints around the place, and nobody believes her that he was taken because um, there's no blood, no bodies, no nothing. And um, 
She's like, well, okay. So she moves on with her life. Mm-hmm. Ends up marrying this other dude. Has like three kids. And that guy, he's like kind of smacking around. So he's not great either. But... Well, there's a reason why. <laughs> well, it's a ridiculous reason. But yes, there is a reason. Um, and then one night, as she has these three kids, basically doing almost everything herself. Oh, one winter's night, yeah. Is suddenly at her door, this man returns now, looking like he's been outside for the entire three years that he's been missing completely disheveled he's got his hair super long his eyes are still crazy wild it made me think of uh, like serious black coming out of ass oh, okay. you know <laughs> like like a prisoner who's yeah. never been allowed pretty, to cut their hair they're pretty never much been washed. his clothes are all ripped up he's all dirty yeah. and shit and he's like he's like i'm hungry give me some food well it's also like kind of a creepy ass scene it's too, really he creepy. just like walks in like nothing happened and, and sits, sits the fuck down yeah. and like and she's like the kids are there, and she like shushes him into the other side of the house. Yeah. Hey, and he's like, "Where did these spring from?" She's like, "From my belly, because you left." And he's like, "You thought I'd never come back? You wish I was dead, you whore!" Blah blah blah. Hey. He throws the table. He goes fucking berserk, and he's like, "If I was a wolf once more, I teach this horror lesson." And you're like, "Wait, wait, what?" And he starts ripping oh. his fucking face oh off. He like rips his shirt open yeah. and he starts ripping his face off and like tearing pieces off of it and stuff. Man, this is the transformation I was talking about earlier. Mm. It is really fantastic. Now, look, I love the Howling transformation, mm. the Rob Bottin one. I love American Wolf in London, the Rick Baker one. But this one just fucking hits different. I'll give it that. It definitely hits different. It is like true classic skinwalker werewolf tearing the skin off and there's a wolf underneath kind of thing deal. And it's all like perfectly anatomically correct. Right. From the tendons to the skeleton and all this stuff. That's a lot of tendons He ends up like his hand like turns into a skeleton and like he ends up like tearing his face off Mm. and then the whole front of his face pushes out into a snout. That was cool. Oh man. And he turns into a, a regular wolf. So it's not a wolf... It's not a werewolf in the tradition of like the wolf man. Like he's not a wolf right, man. Yeah. He's a, he's just a, he turns into a regular wolf. kind of like Wolfen, the movie Wolfen. Yeah, yeah, that's where, true. Nick. Where the werewolves literally turn into regular wolves. Wolves, yeah. Not not like a not like the bad moon humpback yeah. werewolf monster. Right, that most people are more familiar with, right. generally speaking. But classically, the werewolf is you skinwalk or well. In traditional, like, uh, Native American sense, skinwalking. Right, skinwalkers, right. But, and it's just a traditional werewolf lore, you just turn into a wolf. It's not, not like a, it's not like a creature, per se. Because I think we, we've talked about this before, either on it's our show. It's not humanoid. They're, they're, you know. Yeah, either on our show or when we did the uh, the crossover with uh, Tony from Hack the Movies a couple yep. of years ago, where you did the Dracula, oh, yeah. Bram Stoker's episode, and then we did the, the, the joint Mary Shelley's Frankenstein Anyway, we talked about it in the past where it's like a lot of werewolf lore uh, is kind of similar to vampire lore because it kind of stem from a lot of the same ideas. It stems from the same kind of entities and yeah. beings. Uh, That's that that kind of werewolf. Which I mean. which is kind of like a lot of the themes in this movie that we'll talk about in a little bit, like deals with the devil and stuff like that. Oh yeah, and, and superstitions among townspeople and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff that feed into that. Exactly. Now, well, vampires are more like ghouls, but then like also. Werewolves kind of came out of the same thing, like That's you were saying. saying. Yeah. I, I can't remember exactly. I'm not trying to go too deep no, into no, that. Sure. But... I think we do talk about it on the Bad Moon episode too, with uh, with CB Smith. Yeah, like, yeah, like about so werewolves. We definitely talked about it before. Um, yeah, but you're right. This thing transforms, oh my God. And, and the hair starts to grow in. Oh man, it looks so good. And then like her husband comes home and ends up like picking up an axe and just decapitating this wolf. One of the best scenes in the movie. Not only did we get this awesome transformation, but I just love this scene so much. This wolf head goes flying into a <laughs> barrel of milk. I don't know if that's milk. I think that's the the fucking bath water, baby. I, I think it's milk. Okay. That's what my wife said, too, but I thought it was, like, the bath water, because hey. they use that shit for, like, a week at a time. <laughs> well, it could be. Um, the wolf head sinks into the milk, and mm. then and then it, there's a big splash of blood, and then when it resurfaces, it's the dude's face. Right. It's such... It's so good. It's, it's impactful. It's so good. And she goes over to him, and she's like, he's just as handsome as... As the day I married him. Oh, is that, that's his justification for slapping the shit and out of she her. Slaps him. Well, because like his there, there was like a weird guy in there, and I guess I guess he knows what a werewolf is and shit like that. I don't know. 
People seem somewhat aware of them, but then again, every time that one's killed, they're unbelievably shocked. But I guess the, the, just the folklore of their neighborhood or their yeah, town, rather. Yeah, their village. Yeah. You know. And that's the end of that first story. Yeah. And we get these periphery stories. Now, This the way that this movie is presented is, is very akin to the, the, the name of the YA novel that she's reading when she falls asleep, The Shattered Dream, because it's like these pieces that intersect with each other that don't necessarily make sense all the time. And it's interpretations of her of Rosaline herself and how Mm. she's dealing with her family problems and I guess grieving and also coming of age. And also I forget if we mentioned this already, but uh, all these stories were written by this woman, Angela Carter Mm -hmm. uh, in this book called the, the bloody chamber, the bloody chamber, huh? uh, which was then adapted into this. And I, what I was read on Wikipedia is that her and Neil Jordan kind of worked together. Oh really? And she actually had an alternate ending that she ended up putting in a, in a different compilation later. And from what I read too, not to go off on the side tangent about this now, but I was thinking about it's it. It's fine. I wish we t- we front loaded it. Yeah, no, I just thought of it. This movie also won a shit ton of awards for like best fantasy movie, yeah. best effects and yeah. everything. I don't know why I'm mentioning it now, but I just thought it was interesting because to your point, these are spinning uh, spins on these old kind of fairy tales yeah. that this woman kind of came up with. And uh, you're right. That first one's kind of interesting where it ends on that really poignant note. But then we do go back to like, again, the wraparound that's kind of within the wraparound. Yeah. It's kind of the main story, if you will. Yeah. Rosaline, like of Rosaline and the grandma, Rosaline the and the grandma and the family is like the main beat. And then, yeah. and then from there it kind of weaves in and out exactly. of reality to other uh, stories and mm-hmm. dreams or what have you. Again, there's also just like, scenes of just weird shit happening yeah. like like we see her sleeping with gran in the in the in the hut or whatever yeah. you want to call it again super cozy like i want to be there that's when the weasel wakes up and the, like, yeah, the weasel wakes up or the, the mink wakes up and goes yeah. and you're like what the fuck is that thing <laughs> There's also a part where they're just like walking in the woods and there's randomly a boa constrictor. I'm like, I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> well, I, well, there's so there's random uh, appearances of like snakes all over the place, which I guess is like the like a devil person. Well, yeah, personification of the devil and mm. or evil lurking around every corner or always there. Sure, I could see that. It's always okay. present. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Waiting for you to fuck up I, and wow. take advantage of you. So uh, little little Woody Harrelson uh, wants to take her on a walk in the woods. Gives her some flowers. I mean, she's a babe. She's very, very pretty. She's strikingly beautiful, uh, Rosaline, uh, the uh, the actress who plays her. And um, they he wants to take her to walk in the woods. So he's like, yeah, I got you some flowers there, Rosaline. Rosaline, want to yes. take a walk with me after church, Rosaline? Uh, he has to ask a few times, though. The first time he asks, it doesn't pop off. No. First, she's got to take the flowers home, and Dad's fucking eating some of them. Oh, mess David with Warner her. like eats them like uh, fucking with her, yeah. Uh, which then weirdly enough leads to him and his wife fucking. Which I guess you know when you had a small house back then, you're all in the same room. I mean, well, I'm saying back then, I know some people are still, for better or worse, in those situations. Yeah. But ooh, that's rough. I mean, she's got that's it worse than Joel Sholin and uh, fucking stepfather with the headphones. Oh, she's got it worse than Gage Dobson and Munchie, dude. Oh, God. Yeah, at least she doesn't wake up till dad and mom are like on the last pump, and she, he's getting off mom. But it's like, all right, and no wonder she wants to stay at grandma's house. Well, again, there's the, this weird exposure to the sexuality yes. and like and like. I guess on that note, she's yeah, she's having those feelings, and she's like, oh, you get hurt by dad, and she's like, no, dad doesn't hurt me. Well, especially after she hears that story about that other woman that grandma tells her she's getting beaten up and yeah, harassed yeah. by both husbands. Yeah, yeah. So like that that's like the warning sign. She wanted to make sure that like her father wasn't doing the same thing. But also like what sex question mark? Sure. There is a little <laughs> bit of that happening yeah, yeah. 100%. Or like I'm about to I'm about to start having sex, I guess. Yeah, cuz I forget if it's that same scene, uh but there is definitely a moment when they when mom and dad find out that that amorous boy is trying to get her heart. And yeah. mom's like not having it, but dad's like, what's the harm? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, like, oh, yeah, you know, they've known each other since they were babies. Right. And he's yeah. like, yeah, what's the saying? You don't lose a daughter, you gain a son. And yeah. she's like, dad, it's just a walk. Yeah. <laughs> They're not fucking yeah, yeah. They're not getting married. Um, then we get that side, another side story that kind of veers off yeah. again. And this is the one about um, this kid meeting the devil. Is this the one of the church where grandma's talking? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah. they're like sitting by the then the by cemetery. Alice's grave. Yeah, they're sitting by her sister's grave, and the priest is like outside <laughs> trimming a tree or some shit, which is, is a great, actually, which is a great comedy, scene. great comedy bit. Drops the fucking branch and yeah. Angela Lansbury. She's like, oh, she gets all pissed off. He's like, see you next Tuesday, Angela Lansbury. <laughs> 
Well, she's talking smack about yeah, it. She's like, like, I can hear you. Jeff is a post, and he's like, I can hear the whole answer. I heard uh, every one of it. Get the fuck out of here. But you're right. We get into this second story. Yeah, so, like, it's this story about, they don't, she doesn't really preface it with anything. We just mm. kind of go into it. And it's like, oh, 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 it's like, if you're born feet first on Christmas Day, you'll meet the devil eventually and then turn into a werewolf or right. something. Right, and they also, like, more kind of sending that idea home because it's going to be important for the rest of the movie mm-hmm. that eyebrows, watch out for them. Yeah, well, Especially it, if they're in the woods just kind of hanging out waiting for somebody. Yeah, so this guy's, so this kid with eyebrows in the middle is, like, waiting for this carriage, and it turns out to be, like, this fucking Rolls Royce. <laughs> And kind of cool. Rosaline is driving it like with blonde hair. It's really weird. Like it's 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 this it's really creepy. And it's almost to be like because this kid is dressed in like ye old garb right. and this guy is in like a fancy suit. What's well, the devil? I know it's the devil, right. but it's like appearing to him in like a automobile. Right. Like if he came to us uh, in a UFO or some insane yeah. thing. <laughs> right. right. That's the idea. Right. Um, like you can't even question it because you don't even know what it is. No, it's just absolutely bizarre. And he gives him like this little jar of shit. Cologne, I guess. I, I guess. Werewolf and, cologne. Like, <laughs> Dude, this is the instant tan from uh, My Harriest Adventure, the Goosebumps <laughs> book. Because he puts his finger in and he rubs it on his chest. And I guess he's like a young kid who wants yeah. to go through puberty and like, oh, look, I'm sexy, That's girls. It. I got hair, chest hair. That's definitely the implication there. And yeah. it's like that great effect where uh you know the reverse of like pulling the hair through the the um foam chest oh to make it look like and growing. then it comes out and it looks it looks really cool it does but uh the problem with that is he gets all the hair on his chest and then like the evil dead like vines like the kandarian demons like wrap them up yeah that one didn't really make a lot of sense i'm kind of there for the the chest hair and and the devil shit but then it's like okay now this is evil dead and then it just kind of ends well she like wakes up, she's like half dreaming again and yeah. he's like in a mirror and there's like a transition. Oh, it's really cool. But... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's kind of fading in and out and then we go back into the right, dream Right, because that's world. like the modern uh, Rosalie sees that, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's the whole Angela Lansbury, you can't trust a priest, he's a fucking, you know, he, he, fu- he don't call him father for nothing. <laughs> he's gonna drop a branch on your head. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna... He's a sexual deviant, just like old men. Even though he appears in a story later being one of the nicest people in this whole fucking movie. Well, also true. I mean, he's a priest, but still. They're not all bad. No. Huh. So, so little Woody Harrelson takes her for a walk. Also, at this point, like we said, Grandma's making that that jacket or whatever. Oh, the shawl. Yeah, she's yeah. about she's about seventy five percent done with that shawl. Well, when they go on the walk, she has it by then. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she's got the full Red Riding Hood get up now. Mm-hmm. And uh, she actually, she doesn't put it on right away, but she takes with her a little lipstick. But this is kind of another weird scene. Not even. She doesn't take it with her because it's it's a weird scene because of this reason. She finds that? Yeah, oh. dude. So she runs off. She runs away I from little Woody detail. Harrelson and he's all fucking. Well, he's being a fucking little shit, to, man. He's trying to get it. He's like trying to make out with her or whatever. Make out with her? He's grabbing at her dress, trying to undo the fucking vest. I'm like, all right, buddy. I understand a little kiss, a little hand uh, holding, but like, look, what th- is happening? Look, this is Rosaline's dream. She could do whatever she wants, all right? That is true, actually. <laughs> I forgot for a second. <laughs> so she runs off and uh, she ends up like climbing this tree and like hiding from him, but then like finds this like stork nest yeah. with these eggs. And it's like, it's like this weird metaphor for like her little hiding place, like her hideaway. It's like yeah. her, her safe, her safe spot up in the attic in that room. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Point. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a metaphor for that where this nest is like her little safe zone. Cause she has like her mirror and she has her sister's lipstick up there oh, that she yeah. puts on with the mirror, which again, it's a weird thing where it's like, is she actually hiding from this kid? Or maybe like you just said, maybe it, you just answered my question. She went up there because she knew that shit was up there. Yeah. Or she was keeping it there or something. Yeah. She knew it was there. Uh, but there's also these eggs in the nest and yeah. they crack open and there's like these little stone baby like druid statues almost yeah like. so she takes it home with her and there's a whole big thing and the kid sees the slaughtered cow and she he like freaks out and he's like wolf and he Wolves, runs yeah he runs back to the village i love this shit because david warner comes out and she's like where's my daughter you motherfucker and he beats the shit out of this he, kid him and a few other townspeople literally thrash this fucking like 16 year old <laughs> they're ddt'ing him 
they're doing fucking macho man elbow drops on this guy. <laughs> they throw him in like the fucking horse drinking water. Uh, this is like the fucking angry video game nerd dummy we threw down the stairs oh, in yeah. the fucking Jekyll episode. <laughs> they beat the living shit. This is like fucking, uh, what's his face in Back to the Future 3. Yeah. David Warner like punches John Glover in the face and he like yeah, falls yeah. into some shit. And then, uh, surprise, your daughter's totally okay. Uh, yeah, beat totally the shit fine. out of a minor for no yeah, reason. Yeah, just I, well, chill. He kind of deserved it. Well, mom, th- mom throws water on him to get him to stop like fighting. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rosaline's fine, but she shows mom. She's like, "Look, mother!" And she opens her hands. It's the baby, and it like right. sheds a tear. And it's like, what is that supposed to symbolize? Like, is I'm that sure. is that the hatchling? And she's a and it's like contrasting to her as she mm. as she's younger and she's finally growing up and the cracking out of her the, shell the sadness of becoming getting older i don't know i don't i have no idea i have no idea what neil was trying to say and then i if i'm not mistaken this is where we have that scene where mom's kind of trying to talk to her daughter and rosaline tells her a story now yeah this is a good one so well just real quick sure. um Rosaline has a lot of back and forth with her mother, um, especially about Gran. And yeah, she's like, she and doesn't she, like Grandma. And she's like, and and her mother and, and Grandma don't get along well. And she's like, look, your grandmother knows a lot, but she doesn't know everything. Mm. Um, and uh, and women can be just as much as a beast uh, as men can be. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Not, so and and like her mother is a very positive influence too. She's a very like independent, strong woman who kind of holds her own and doesn't take no shit. From anybody and yeah. Rosa and Rosaline uh, kind of exhibits the same behavior, where which we'll get to a little bit later. Mm-hmm. But she tells her mother this story about that Grand told her. She's like, "You're never going to believe this, my listen to this shit." <laughs> I still don't believe it. <laughs> it's a great. It's it's a great one. It's about this witch who was like fucking this aristocratic guy, mm. and he ends up just like leaving her. Yeah, and throws her away and gets married to somebody else some and, other rich bitch yeah and they're having this like party in this tent for their wedding and she shows up and she's basically like oh yeah you're just gonna toss me away are ya mm. and I guess she just like she puts a curse on him right well it's the whole great party yeah, the whole party, these disgusting motherfuckers. Uh, it's also kind of an animal farm situation on some level because they're just really heavy duty playing up the gluttony at hand, especially this old woman who's like oh, just God, going to yeah. town on this. Oh, yeah. Leg. You know what? It, um, It's also like she also mentions that like the the wolves have more decency than you or something like that. Or they are the wolves. Well, well, wol- the wolves of the forest have more, yeah, have are, are better than, than uh, Okay, they are. yeah, yeah, you're right. They have right. more decency than do, they do. This reminded me a lot of the, the scene in Silver Bullet where uh, the reverends having the dream where everybody turns into werewolves oh, in the church. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they have the fucking... They're playing the organ and shit. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, and then the uh, the werewolf in the military fatigues, but that was uh, American Werewolf in London, right? Where he has the dream. Oh, the Nazi werewolves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, but these this this whole sequence is great because all these people at this party just start transforming into wool, like reg- honest to goodness wolves, and they're like sprouting teeth fangs and their hair's coming off. Though the feet are coming out of the shoes, and they're like kicking <laughs> the their wigs. they're kicking their little paws. Uh, there's a couple shots where you know these wolves because of their outfits with you know the. Uh, the wigs and you know, it's like the Rococo period kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. It, you kind of think of your classic fairy tale like kids book version of the big bad wolf. Yes, yeah. Uh, with the hats and everything, which we're gonna get to the big bad wolf shortly, but we don't quite get that iteration of it per no. se. But that's what I thought of a lot. You get this one great shot of the old lady and her whole face is like a wolf. And she's still chowing down. And she's on like leg. Eating, yeah, eating, drinking like wine out of this glass, and then they all turn into wolves and run yep. away. And, and so, some dogs, but there's supposed to be wolves. But uh, they fucking they run right over this uh, peacock. <laughs> I'm like, this poor peacock it didn't do anything. Well, I just stood there. I was surprised it lived. But hey. the, the best punchline of this is like all of the servants crack a fucking bottle of Don Perignon and celebrate the, the death of these people. Well, they're the new nobles now. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got their fucking fortunes. We got their clicking glasses. They got the whole mansion to themselves. Yeah. Uh, also, just again, this is a dream. I don't know why we have to keep saying that, but. It's a dream, but it's also kind of cool how uh, this scene is a kind of in a tent outside of the mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. that our characters are in the beginning, kind of connecting yeah. the dots again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I don't know exactly like 
how this one ties. I get this. Well, this this is very periphery in terms of like what's going on. Sure. In her real life. Well, this one kind of wraps up because she has the baby now, this witch. And it's kind of like baby on the top of the treetop. And it's like the same spot. I don't know verbatim, but very similar to where she grabbed like the lipstick and everything. It's similar kind of tree where there's branches. And the witch is up there with the baby in this like little uh, uh, cradle, cradle yeah. laughing while the wolves are howling at her. It's also, I, I guess, I guess the thing here is like also more um, independence and being yeah. able to raise a child by yourself, uh, a woman being able to yeah, raise a child like, by themselves, and uh, um, even though they got the wolves howling around yeah, her feet yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Um, fuck them, I guess. Uh, yeah, where they basically work for her or something. Or, they, they ain't gonna change. Yeah, still wolves, but there was something about uh, they mentioned that she wanted to be serenaded by the wolves, and that's what it is. And yeah. her mother's like, "Why would you want to do that?" And she's like, "Because she has the power over them." Exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? And yeah, you're right. And not vice versa. No, hundred percent. The the literal fucking tables have been flipped. Yeah. Uh, and then so, yeah, you're right. It kind of wraps up that story. So then we cut back to uh, Rosaline real time. And the there is a wolf that killed that cow uh, that we talked about when the little kid ran in. So they set this trap for this wolf. It's got blood all over the face, yeah. Yeah, so they set the trap for this wolf, and they catch it, and they shoot the living shit out of it. They unload on this oh thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, how about just one to the head? They wasted about 20 <laughs> rifle <laughs> shots. That was like Loomis style, man. Six oh times that God. wolf got it. But David Warner comes back to the to the house, oh. and he's got this thing wrapped up in a, in a napkin, and he's like, he's like, it was a forepaw of the biggest wolf I ever seen when I cut it off it. And they're like, okay, well, let's see it. And he's like, I swear it was a forepaw. Yeah. He puts it on the table and opens it up, and it's a fucking human hand right. with a ring on it. It's it's great. For a hot second, I was like, oh, is that grand? Is that grand? <laughs> they throw the fucking hand in they the never, fire. They never tell you who it is, but they're like, what should we do with it? And, and he throws it in the fire, and it burns. That's, and it's it's really, really good scene. Yeah. It's super creepy, too. I was trying to look at the ring on the hand to see if that was going to tell me anything, but I didn't bother rewinding it to double check. But yeah, yeah it's, I, it's creepy. It's also one of those things where, like, what about the rest of the body? Like, because you severed the- We don't return to that. You, you severed the paw and it turned human, but the but the wolf body doesn't turn back into a human. Well, we never do find out. No one ever goes back and checks, to my knowledge. I guess, and, and I guess after that, they're just like, just bury it. Like, fuck that. I don't even want to know. Or the wolves came back and reclaimed their own. They just <laughs> ate the motherfucker. It could be. Yeah. So yeah, now we're getting ready to go back to grandma's house. Well, well, because as far as they're concerned, well, the alpha's dead. The wolves aren't a problem oh, anymore. Yeah, well, the wolf's gone. It's no big deal. I can walk there by myself. I'm a big girl now. I can walk there by myself. No problem. It's just grandma's house. And it's like, stick to the path and you'll be fine. Which she continuously does not do, by the way. No, she's, a, well, she's, a, she's adventurous, right? Yeah. She's straying from the path. I because, get it. It, it. Again, it's the metaphor for like... Going off the beaten road. Going off the beaten path and like... You know, uh, not, li- not listening to your superiors oh, and yeah. kind of taking your own chances and sure. making your own way and kind of learning and experimenting for yourself in, the, in, in the outside world. But there are dangers that you are susceptible to. <laughs> and, and kind of going back yeah. to what grandma's been kind of echoing throughout the entire yeah. movie is that, hey, they might look handsome. They yeah. might look good. They might be charming as fuck, which they are. But they are probably evil on the inside. Bad Don't news. trust so quickly. Harry on the inside, yeah. Right, Harry, exactly. Okay. So uh, so Ro- Rosalie's making her way to Grandma's house, and she runs af- uh, across this, I guess he's a French nobleman? He's supposed to be the hunter. He's the hunter. It's a spin on it. I, which is fun, because mm-hmm. it's like, he's the hunter- and he's also like he's the hunter, but that's like a multiple me- he's word like, meaning to that. He's like the hunter in a sexual predator way. He's a hunter, yeah, right. But he's also the hunter, like like literally the character, the hunter, little the character, but, but he's also, also the, hunter, the wolf, he's, exactly. So he's like the hunter in three different ways, it's, and he's it's like and he's like driven by his desires for like the young women and stuff like that. He also like he's not flat out saying he's evil or he's a werewolf or anything, but he is just like. Really pushing his luck. Oh, dude, he is fucking he is caterpillaring it, yeah. his, it up. Yeah. I, I again, I don't want to like perseverate on this because again, it's a dream and it's not the point. But it's also that weird thing where this guy seems way older than her. No, he is. He's he. If she's sixteen, he's got to be like twenty. And again, I don't know if they ever say that, but she definitely is like a younger, like. Definitely, like you said, coming into her own, but she's not quite, you know. She, she's a ripe tomato, my uh, man. Yeah, the flower hasn't totally bloomed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he is like, you know, getting up close on her, trying to kiss her. He makes her like eat a cookie out of his mouth. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Man. So then he makes a bet with her. He's like, he's like, 
I'll give you my compass. I bet you I can make it to Grant's house quicker than you can get there. Right, because he has this compass, and he explains how a compass works. In case you're not sure, the north always points in a certain direction, or the yeah. magnet always points north, I should and say. And his point is that he can just go through the woods and get there quicker than she will on the path. Not mentioning that he's secretly a wolf and can just fucking run there 25 miles away. Well, more, but maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. So she bet he bets the she bets him the compass, and he bets her a kiss if she gets it. A compass. real one, not a, you know, not a thimble. Not a, th- no. Not a thimble. So naturally, cut to him being at oh, Grandma's the, house. The, the wolf gets to Grandma's <laughs> house. Lift up the latch and walk in. Grandma's shaking, by the way. <laughs> oh, dude, she, it's like a fucking leaf in I the got, wind. I got to tell you something. Angela Lansbury's not taking no shit. She sees this dude and she's like, you motherfucking werewolf. And she picks up like a, a fire poker <laughs> and cracks him upside the dome yeah. and he like howls. Dude, this guy forgets his strength or just does not give a shit. <laughs> Before that, she hits him when she hits him with this. He's like, oh, he's like screaming and this giant tongue comes out of his mouth. And it's like whipping around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very comical. Oh man, it, it's just so creepy. Yeah, no. It and is. he, of course, him with the contacts and stuff. He's a very intense looking dude too. Yeah. Very gaunt and like you know. I also like the hair. It's just kind of starting to really go all over the place as he gets more feral. Angela Lansbury goes after this guy with like a hot poker, and he like grabs it and like burns the shit out of his hand. He fucking winds up and backhands this bitch's head off her shoulders. Uh, and, and speaking of dolls, her head magically transforms into a fucking porcelain doll's head or something. Because when it hits the wall, it just shatters it into glass. It shatters. Well, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Like that she dream ha- stuff, I guess. Well, right? yeah, but she has that porcelain grandma doll on her shelf. Oh. Oh, like the actual character. Yeah. So when okay. so when the when the head flies into the wall, it shatters like the porcelain head. It's all right. Just, it's pretty great. I don't dislike that as much now that you yeah. made that point. Yeah. At, at the time, I was like, all right, I guess because it's a dream and they didn't want to go hardcore gory, but all right, but that that I, makes more sense. I appreciate the absurdity of it, sure. but also the surrealism of it. Uh, I like it more now with that knowledge. I missed that on my viewing. But yeah, she's she's fucking dead in one hit, and you think, okay, where's this gonna go? Well, he sits down in the classic Red Riding Hood uh, kind of setup where he's he's even kind of talking like Grandma when Red Riding Hood shows uh, up. Lift up the latch and come in. And she's like, oh, I guess you made it here first. He's like shit and he's got his shirt off. Uh, yeah, but she doesn't even like initially question. Like she's looking around, but she's like, all right, where's Grandma? He's like, yeah, she went to go get some uh, firewood or some shit. <laughs> you sent an old woman outside to get firewood? <laughs> yeah. This is where like. It converges, right? Like all the story, all lines. the well, all the storylines, and like what what Rosaline's taken away from uh, what she's experienced and v- from herself and from yeah. other, what other people have instilled upon her. And this is kind of her becoming an adult, if you will. This is literally her uh, her <laughs> flower blooming, if you will, um, because she's 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 at throws with this dude who is now coming on to her as a, as the wolf as a wolf man because he's like he's like she's like oh what big eyes you have better to see you with right all the classic one big arms you have better to hug you with all this stuff she ends up grabbing like his gun oh yeah and points it at him and he like freaks out a little bit and he's like there's this back and forth of him kind of it's the it's the it's the the devil tempting thing right it's that forbidden yeah forbidden fruit thing and the and the and the snake kind of um Motif. getting you getting you to give in to your sin because he's like yeah. he's like he's like yeah come on just just give me that kiss now let's let's do this but part of me is kind of like this motherfucker killed your grandma did you forget yeah well they he- killed your grandma the, the hair is like in the fire oh that's fucked up because they they make a point earlier that the wolves can't eat hair or so. clothes because she he makes her burn the fucking shawl at one I, point it's really creepy grandma spent the whole movie making Dude, it's, but it's creepy she's like yeah my grandma's hair huh so you killed her? <laughs> and he's like, she was delicious. It's kind of weird. Like, I get what they're trying to do, but it was kind of starting to lose me there because I'm like, I maybe I'm just dense, but I was like really confused during that part. The best part of the, one of the best parts of the movie, uh, he's like, he's like, I love the company of wolves. T- oh, yeah. TM. Says the title, and right. And she fucking shoots him in the arm and he goes berserk. Oh, right. And again, yeah. the tongue is whipping out of the mouth and stuff. And then this is the iconic shot. Now. Right. Oh, now, yeah, right. Now. A lot of people fault VHS for not depicting things on the cover that are actually in the movie, uh, like a fault, like a like false advertising. Sure. I'll tell you what, 
you get this, you get this right here in the movie. Yeah, literally. He's, he rears up, and this fucking wolf mouth comes barreling out of his mouth, and it, like, opens and snarls. Uh, I think that, I mean, as cool as the other one uh, transformation was, I think this might be the better it, of the two. It is so cool, and, like, the skin rips off him, and it's a full wolf now. Yep. Um, and then Rosalie, and but he's wounded, right? Right. And then Rosalie does this thing where she goes over to the wounded wolf, um and like pets him and stuff and yeah. then and then tells him the, the last story. Okay, right. That's what yeah. it is about. This kind of she like a, a reversal. Yeah, it's a she wolf, and she Who, kind of is a wolf that enters into town. Kind of comes just... out of the well from hell. Apparently, oh, yeah. yeah. But like, doesn't seem like it's looking for trouble. But the no. neighborhood. Or, or village, I keep saying neighborhood. <laughs> uh, the village. Won't you be mine? Won't you be yeah, my exactly. werewolf? Why yeah. don't you eat this bullet? Because this guy walks out of his house and just shoots this wolf for no reason. Oh, yeah. And, ah, runs off bleeding. Yeah. And then it gets turns into a woman. Right. And is just, you know, again, like someone that's just out in the wild their entire life. She's a life. crazy wild woman. You know what? It, it reminded me of, like, the scary stories to tell in the dark wolf hmm. girl thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, But the priest sees her, like, all right. naked and shit behind a tombstone. What we were alluding to earlier, yeah. yeah. And he helps he helps her out and m- mends her back to health. Still naked as fuck the whole time, yeah. though. Yeah. See a lot of her he, ass in the shadows. Couldn't, couldn't just, like, put a something on her, like a <laughs> sheet or something. But she gets... She, is mended, but then goes back to the well and crawls back into hell. Almost like she realizes that this world isn't for her kind of situation. And then, uh, you're right, she goes in the well and we kind of come back to, I was going to say reality, but the the actual dream, not the dream within the dream. It's the dream within the dream, yeah. The, all the townsfolk run up and they're like, Rosalie, where are you? And they go to Grandma's house. Oh, and yeah. the fucking wolf plows out of the, the, uh, the, window. the window and runs off into the night. And they're like, oh my god, is Ro- is Rosalie dead? Like, what happened? They go inside, and there's a wolf sitting there with Rosalie's cross cru- crucifix on. Yeah, and they go to kill it. And mom's like, no. And then Rosalie jumps out of the window and runs away as right. a wolf. Um, I, I'm guessing she fell into temptation or something. I, I, it's it's falls into temptation, becomes the be- com- she becomes the beast herself. Yeah. Um. I guess her own woman. Her own independent yeah, I guess woman, you could read that a few different ways. Yeah. Uh, who's who's kind of you know ready to do their own thing. Ready has fully come of age mm. and has chosen her own path. I yeah, guess. I could see that. Um, but she also jumps out the fucking window. She, oh, she's well, so they're gonna they're gonna kill her. Um, so she leaves, and and that's kind of it. And then we cut back to Rosalie in real time. Well, we have these all basically the wolves kind of join the pack. She the she joins running. the pack. Yeah. And they're running through the fantasy woods, and then it kind of changes to like from the fantasy woods to the woods from the beginning. And then you're right, it kind of comes back to reality, yeah. and they're still fucking running like they didn't stop. And they run into the mansion, and they're running up the stairs, and yep. they're running all through the stairs, and they get to like Rosalie's door, and they're like trying to knock it down. Mm-hmm. And then we're left with this scene. Well, she's she's awoken by this. She she wakes up from it, but we're left with this scene where like the German Shepherd from the beginning jumps through the window of the room. Right into the room, and, and she's she like, and she and she screams, uh, and then I guess it's just like a jump scare, and then it just ends. And, well, it ends, and then there's like a vo of like this poem, oh yeah, uh, about wolves and things like that, uh, and about all the events that had just transpired. I was reading that they originally wanted some kind of scene, and I don't remember all the the details, but where she jumps into the floor like it's water, but then, like, Neil Jordan was trying to say, wow, well, our technology wasn't really there yet, which I think is just total bullshit. You could have done a mirror thing or something, but... Haven't you seen the Eddie Grant Electric Avenue video? You could do Literally. it. Literally. Yeah. Uh, which kind of seemed interesting, but maybe it was just a semantics thing. They just decided to go with this instead, or maybe the budget was totally fucking kaput at that point. But it just, just kind of ends, and like you said, there is that VO, but... Uh, I, I... <sighs> You kind of want a little more after all that, I've been right? Really, I've been trying to think about the ending of this movie mm. and, and all the event. Like a lot of it makes sense to me, and, and the symbolism and and the euphemisms yeah. and things like that. But like this one in particular is kind of like, is it just there to be like the dream has now crossed over into reality, and it's the the horrors of real life and and right. life and life itself is not a fantasy or a fairy tale and mm. and it's dangerous and there's all these kinds of things that we sh- kind of shelter ourselves from or distract ourselves with and the the wolf is like or the dog is like 
shattering that reality by coming through the glass and the dog is the is life does yeah. that make sense i mean is yeah. that the takeaway we're supposed to take away from I, this i mean i'll be perfectly honest this this movie kind of left me at the end there completely fucking puzzled yeah uh and, and I, i'll expand on that in my final thought but i i was really taken aback by the ending it really like when those titles started scrolling i was like really <laughs> I was like, what the fuck did I just watch? I, like, I couldn't believe it ended like that. I, I was mean, like, really, like, scratching my head a little. I was like, oh, okay, I mean, sure. It, I mean, it is beautiful, and it does make yeah, you think, no, and, yeah. and, the, and the whole movie's kind of like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I guess with that being said, before we get into our final thoughts, is mm. this on the shelf or in the dumpster? This is in the dumpster for me, man. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why, though. Yeah. Now, I've talked fairly highly about sure. this, I feel like. Uh, I just did not work for me, and I've said this before... You said it's an art film. Yeah. That's definitely a factor. I just think that for me, and this is just, maybe this is just a me thing. Maybe some of you folks can relate, but this movie is incredibly slow. Uh, and I understand a lot of that is for pacing and to set up the uh, the aesthetic and uh, to really get you in there. And I feel like it needs that. It's a whole vibe. Yes. Like, like I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but yeah. for me, I'm like checking my watch and I understand that I'm like, Oh man, this is what they're going for. It's yeah, it's more of like an immersive yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. This was just a movie for me where I was really, really trying to love this film because mm -hmm. there's so much about it that I think is amazing. Like the effects, the sets are just like they they really blew me away. Yeah. The acting and even the, like I said, it's kind of like an anthology, which is kind of interesting because I wasn't expecting that at all. And even like the Red Riding Hood shit, somehow I missed that detail going into this. <laughs> I, I thought she's was, wearing the damn thing. Well, again, I I guess I missed that part on the oh, cover. Yeah, yeah. I just was so focused on the wolf uh, snout coming out of the mouth. Yeah. Uh, but with all that said, all those positive things, it's just this was not a film for me, and maybe I need to revisit it. Uh, I had kind of a similar reaction for after watching this that I did The Witch the first time I saw that. Yeah. It didn't click for me, but on successive viewings, I actually ended up liking that film a lot. So maybe give it another shot in a year or something. Maybe I'll change my opinion. I still would recommend this film. Yeah. Uh, it's in the dumpster for me, but it's kind of like one of those <laughs> ones that's still like wrapped in the cellophane. It's not really damaged or anything. You could easily you know, stick your arm and not even sure. that far in and, and find yeah. it quite quickly. Uh, but I don't know, man. This is one of those rare films that I can totally appreciate, but it is just not a Sean film. Hey, that's fine, uh, man. I, I like the joke on some level about The Lighthouse uh, was another film. <laughs> God, not I, even remotely comparable. And I love that movie. I know, and a lot of people do, but yeah. that's another film that just did not click for me. And sure. again, for very different reasons. But uh I'll have to revisit this uh, down the road, but uh, did not... Uh, did not make it on the shelf for me, unfortunately. I think I think you're you're right. I, this is one of those movies that does kind of warrant uh, subsequent viewings uh, to really get the full breadth of what's going on. I I, I would the say the surrealist aspect of it is even though I love that kind of stuff, it's, was very hard for me to wrap my brain around at times. Yeah, and like when you're first seeing it, you don't have really too much time to really digest it. Yeah, and you kind of you kind of need another viewing to kind of put all the pieces together. Um, but with that being said, this is on the shelf for me for sure. Um. Again, I said this is one of my. This, I think this is one of my favorite werewolf movies personally. Um, just the way because it's the way it's depicted. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to this movie than just werewolf stuff. Oh yeah, and it is. and I can see how that can be weird hmm. for a lot of people, and the way that the it's presented and um, it's presented in this kind of fragmented. Uh, like almost non-linear, but not quite. Right, it's this fragmented kind of, obviously this shattered dream mm. type way of telling the story and these weird events. And and again, there's a lot of symbolism and there's a lot of metaphor metaphorical uh, things mm. with shots and and situations and different things that Rosaline kind of fucking goes through. But with that being said, um, I love the werewolf stuff that's in it. Um, I love how it kind of takes those um, classic stories and legends and weaves them into this little girl's dreams, like because she's so into that stuff, like her like, subconscious, almost. like her subconscious. Again, I wanna, I wanna kind of uh, 
uh, bounce it off Labyrinth because it's similar mm. in the same way that Sarah kind of lives in this fantasy world and loves all these different uh, stories and, and all this fantasy stuff. The only thing missing is, you know, David Warner didn't have a sock in his pants. <laughs> That's right. We yeah. did that. I, could you imagine David Warner as the Goblin King? I could I see could it. I kind of see it, actually. I could see it. I mean, you're not going to top Bowie, but no. it's, it, it would be close. Yeah, put him in those little stockings. Yeah. <laughs> It'd knock his head off with a ladder, obviously. Te- tease his hair out and put some eye makeup oh, on okay. him. There you go, man. Um, no, I mean, I, I get it. It's not for everybody. We've already said it 900 times, but it is an art film. Mm. And it's, but it's got this air, but it's got this atmosphere to it that just hits for me. It kind of whimsical, like you said, about dolls on some level. Yeah, well, yeah, it's whimsical. It's, 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 it's high fantasy mm. with horror elements put into yes. it right and like the special effects are fucking so dope and i i love the depictions of the transformations and stuff like that and then how they kind of tell that story um with you know the classical way but also in a modern way that kind of blends it w- oddly because it's a dream right like we were saying before where there's elements of of uh real world fantasy world modern world and old world kind of clashing together and making this cacophony of like weird surrealistic situations Mm -hmm. um it's just i think it's a lot of fun it's like it's like a it's like a gothic horror storybook Mm. dream fantasy movie that's a good way to put it yeah and uh, i and i really enjoy it i think it's good it's it's very british and i'm fucking here for it it Um, is very very (laughs) british And I think that's I think that's what's so cozy about it too. Uh, I, I, again, it I I just really like it. I I I love this movie a lot. And if you haven't seen it, give it a shot. Give it a spin. You can check it out on the uh, Shout Factory Blu-ray, uh, the Company of Wolves, 4K Ultra HD. If you're into that, I don't know if it's streaming anywhere. Uh, I think I said it earlier, but it is on YouTube. It's one of the few like uh, you know sometimes they'll have like ad with ads. Oh, okay, on YouTube. Gotcha, it's gotcha. one of those. So. The ads are a bit excessive, but I wanted to watch it on my TV. Uh, so I'm wondering, I'm wondering if like watching this movie with ads broke, maybe broke the the uh, the atmosphere and the and the kind of like uh, you know what I mean. It broke yeah, it broke it yeah. up and it, and, it, and it kind of fucked up your viewing experience. That's possible. I watch so many movies on Tubi at this point, but to be fair, Tubi's a little better about ads. But that is a good point that you make there. Just maybe revisit this without any interruption and see how I feel about and it. And just watch it straight through because. I You're feel right, like you get taken in and out of it so much. That, I didn't even think about that. I feel That's like, a good point. I feel like random ad insertion in this movie would, they were random, by would, the way. Would like totally Mid fuck sentence. me up. Because it's already it's already a kind of a little bit hard to follow. And if you're getting yeah. ads thrown in for like a minute and a half, you're gonna forget the shit that you just saw. So on that note, I get that yeah. is a major disclaimer. If you do watch it, you you're hundred <laughs> yes. percent right. Especially like the volume was like I had it at like twenty five. Yeah. And the, on, on my TV it was just, you know, not loud, loud, but loud enough. And yeah. then it's like the commercials come on and like blow me out of my fucking chair uh so i guess if you don't mind that it is on youtube but that is a good uh little uh warning to put on yeah that. you're right yeah i mean again I, I maybe it's not for everybody but um if you're into uh fantasy art like gothic fantasy art films um and werewolf stuff like traditional werewolf lore and stuff and you want to see angela lansbury get her fucking head knocked off in practical effects and practical effects uh, again like the practical effects are so awesome um it's a it's a good cozy time, especially for this time of year. Again, like I said about dolls, it's a good pairing if you want to pair both of them together. We I, did, yeah, we, <laughs> we sure did. Uh, it's just I don't know how much else I ha- what else I have to say, and I, I feel at the at the fear of repeating myself. Mm. It's uh, it's just it's a, cozy. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. I I just really dig the atmosphere of this film. Um, and all the components that make 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 it up. So yeah, if you'd like some more movie dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. And you can sign up for a tier as low as two dollars a month to get yourself an ad-free version of the audio version of the show. And uh, we got a ton of other little uh behind the scenes content. We've got watch alongs, we got a whole archive of all the ones we've done of different movies. We we sit there with you guys in the chat, we watch a movie. Uh you can sign up for that five and ten dollar tier. We have stuff like commentary tracks. Bonus videos, 
patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Check it out. Yeah, and for no money at all, if you're on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't because it really helps the show. And if you listen on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor and leave a five-star review uh, if you're digging it because it really helps the show reach new people and get us up on those charts and uh, get some more dumpster dwellers in here. You know what I'm saying? Kick it up, baby. And if you want to get updates on the show and what's going on in the dumpster, you can follow us on social media at Movie Dumpster or find us at moviedumpsterpodcast.com where you can get updates on what we got going on, future events, and store updates if you're interested in a little MD merch. Uh, check us out. So that's it. That's The Company of Wolves from 1984, directed by Neil Jordan. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. <laughs>